What was short term turned out to be much more of a long term problem. And with the reserves having dried, Zambia started borrowing. <coughs> so if you look at Zambia's date, get back to 1976, get back to 1977. This country started borrowing. Kaunda and his comrades spent a lot of time <coughs> trying to convince the international community that Zambia needed not just development aid, but it also needed loans, grants, in order to sustain itself. <coughs> Ten years later, that's around 1985, the base metal prices had not gone up substantially. The gaps that were being created were still apparent. The infrastructure that had been put in place in the first years of independence was deteriorating. So what looked like a small economy with good infrastructure, with proper social services, was becoming poorer and poorer every day. The big lesson was that the Zambian economy is relatively artificial. Our dependence on a single commodity is our undoing, and has remained so. But so long copper was doing well, Politicians, those that manage the economy, forgot the fact that this is a dangerous situation. And by the mid 1980s, it was apparent that we had overborrowed. And where we had borrowed from, they were demanding back their money. From positive balances, from a country that had been, had $600 million of external debt, we became a country with external debt of about seven billion. And with that amount, no one was ready to give us any money. Zambia had fallen into what they call a debt trap. We were now spending more on debt servicing than we were spending on education, on health, and the other social sectors. And people were feeling it. The biggest losers were the working masses. They went in the shops and there were shortages. They went to school, the schools could not afford the textbooks, the exercise books. They went to the hospitals, in the hospitals there were no price. <coughs> we were not even able to pay the health workers decent wages and they were running out from this country. We lost a lot in terms of brain drain of qualified people because the system was collapsing. And with the collapsing of the economy, the politics of UNIPI, the monolithic structures of UNIPI were also coming to an end. Yes, there were external factors. The challenges of the Soviet Union and many others brought about the sage for capitalist changes. And we're all looking forward to that. We're all looking forward to a Zambia where we would have several political parties, a Zambia where uh, people could access a little bit of foreign exchange, a Zambia where the schools would look more or less the same like the schools we had in the 60s and 70s. So that was the dream of the Zambians. Come 1991, you had a new government into power, and that new government promised Zambians more freedom. It promised Zambians an economy that was liberalized, an economy that would create jobs, an economy where essential commodities were not going to lack. And the Zambians got it. And for a moment, we thought we were on the right track. But we had the huge debt burden. What do you do with the almost $7 billion that was hanging on our heads? And we're still paying back more than we're putting into the social sectors. And by the way, it wasn't just Zambia that was facing that crisis. All the countries on this continent, the 54 African countries 
were going through that crisis. When the fuel prices change, when the base metal <coughs> prices change, all extractive economies are affected. Thank you.